What's up guys, welcome back to Biopilot Arms. Um, if I sniffle or cough or anything like that, forgive me, I am sick. Yesterday I could not move literally at all, I sat around doing nothing all day. Um, I almost did not even eat because I just did not have the strength to get up and do anything. Uh, today I feel good enough to actually move around a bit and to you know give you guys a video uh, and I am doing it mostly because I think it's important uh, because it is a big win for our uh, Second Amendment rights thanks to the Fifth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals um, of which I live in because I believe it's Texas Louisiana and another state I can't remember exactly but I know Texas is part of the fifth and they have had some really good decisions as of late one of which is the uh, Patrick Daniels case um, so this case basically is this guy uh, got in trouble uh, for having marijuana and guns so I'm gonna show you kind of the breakdown of what all happened to him and then we'll go into uh, their decision, which can open the door to basically allowing anybody who's a drug user that is not under the influence of drugs at the time to possess firearms. So let's jump right into that, shall we? So here we have the PDF document from uh, the decision. In April 2022, two law enforcement officers pulled Daniels over for driving without a license plate. One of the officers, an agent with the DEA, approached the vehicle and recognized the smell of marijuana. He searched the cabin and found several marijuana cigarette butts in the ashtray. In addition to the drugs, the officers, officers found two loaded firearms, a 9mm pistol and a semi-automatic rifle. He was taken into custody and transported to the DEA office. At no point that night did the DEA administer a drug test or ask whether uh, Daniels was under the influence. Nor did the officers note or testify that he appeared intoxicated. But after Daniels was Mirandized at the station, he admitted that he had smoked marijuana since high school and was still a regular user. When asked how often he smoked, he confirmed he used marijuana approximately 14 days out of a month. So like half the time. Based on his admission, Daniels was charged with violating 18 U.S.C. 922 G3, which makes it illegal for any person, quote, who is unlawful user or, sorry, quote, who is an unlawful user or of or addicted to any controlled substance to possess any firearm. An, uh, uh, an unlawful user is someone who uses illegal drugs regularly and in some temporal proximity to the gun possession. Uh, while Daniels was under indictment, the Supreme Court decided Bruin. It clarified that firearms regulations are unconstitutional unless they are firmly rooted in our nation's history and tradition of gun regulation. Daniels immediately moved to dismiss the indictment, claiming that 922 G3 is unconstitutional under that new standard. The district court denied the motion. It expressed some doubt that Daniels was part of the people whom the Second Amendment protects, as Daniel was not a law-abiding responsible citizen. Nevertheless, assuming that Daniels had a right to bear arms, the court found that 922G was a long-standing gun regulation. So, all of that, blah, 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 blah. Now, before I show you what their decision was as it relates to the actual Fifth Circuit's decision, let's think about this logically. Even without Bruin... Right, even without that landmark case. Common sense would dictate, of course you shouldn't, you know, use any type of drug 
while you're operating a firearm or carrying a firearm. Whether that be marijuana or even alcohol, okay? Now, I have never believed that simply doing drugs should make you an illegal possessor of firearms because we legalize some drugs. I mean, if you have a prescription for pain meds, if you have a prescription for whatever, and technically alcohol is also a drug. These drugs are fine, and you don't lose your ability to possess a fire, right? Now, if you're under the influence of those drugs at the time that you have to use your firearm or use it incorrectly, there's an argument to be made. But simply using these drugs does not mean that you can't own those firearms. Also, going to Bruin, historically speaking, the only time that people were disarmed was when they were actively under the influence. And even sometimes not that. But, I mean, let come on. Back in the day, people smoked what, whatever. Whatever they wanted. Marijuana, ayahuasca, like, they did cocaine. I mean, I'm pretty sure at some point cocaine was in Coke, uh, Coca-Cola. And then they took it out because, you know, people didn't weren't comfortable with that anymore. And the government banned it. Uh, you know, back in in uh, World War One and World War Two, you know, soldiers were issued drugs. And I think even in uh, even in Vietnam, soldiers were on smoking marijuana and nobody really cared. So. And those people were actually shooting and using guns the entire time when it comes to the war. <laughs> so, yeah, I find it kind of odd that we would sit here and say, okay, well, you can't do drugs in your off time and then when you're sober, carry a gun. Now, the fact that he had marijuana butts in his car might suggest to you that he was probably high at the time with guns in his car. To be honest, maybe he just doesn't clean his car that well. They could have been old. Who knows? They never tested. They never tested him to see if he was uh, high or not. So that really can't come into into play here. Anyway. <sighs> anyway. Uh, so let's go back and we'll see what the Fifth Circuit decided. So, Fifth Circuit says that Title 18 U.S.C. 922 G3 bars an individual from possessing a firearm if he is an unlawful user of a controlled substance. Patrick Daniels is one such unlawful user. He admitted to smoking marijuana multiple days per month, but... The government presented no evidence that he was intoxicated at the time of arrest, nor did it identify when he last had used marijuana. Still, based on his confession uh, to regular usage, a jury convicted Daniels of violating 922 G3. The question is whether Daniels' conviction violates his right to bear arms. The answer depends on whether 922 G3 is consistent with our nation's historical tradition of firearms regulation. Uh, going back to Bruin. It is a close and deeply challenging question. Throughout American history, laws have regulated the combination of guns and intoxicating substances. But at no point in the 18th or 19th century did the government disarm individuals who used drugs or alcohol at one time from possessing guns at another. A few states banned carrying a weapon while actively under the influence, but those statutes did not emerge until well after the Civil War. Which is, was that, 1860s? And the Constitution was ratified, if I am remembering correctly, in 1781, I think? So, 81 to 
1860, that's, what, 80 years? So 80 years later, you get one of those, one of a few of these laws? The first federal law of its kind was not enacted until 1968, nearly two centuries after the Second Amendment was adopted. In short, our history and tradition may support some limits on an intoxicated person's right to carry a weapon, but it does not justify disarming a sober citizen based exclusively on his past drug usage. Nor do more generalized traditions of disarming dangerous persons support this restriction on, nine, on non-violent drug offend, uh, users. As applied to Daniels, then, 922G3 violates the Second Amendment. We reverse the judgment of conviction and render a dismissal of the indictment. So, good news, they dismissed his charges. Uh, and this is a huge win, and it's thanks to Bruin. So now, this court decision, we're going to see a lot more of this because of Bruin, uh, having changed the landscape of how court cases are decided and viewed when it comes to the Second Amendment. But this particular one opens the door to allow for possibly changing of the way that that particular uh, 922 is phrased or even getting rid of it entirely or making it so it can't be enforced. Either way, it's good for the Second Amendment because as more states allow weed to be legalized, the federal government still has it on as a scheduled substance so technically speaking anybody who has a weed card for medicinal marijuana in Oklahoma or California or whatever the federal government can still come after you for that right which means they could actually also still bar you from having guns and just like this guy lock you up for that however with this fifth circuit court decision it's possible that the precedent has been set to where that's not possible. Because you use an illegal substance, they can't get you on gun charges. They can't take your guns from you or anything like that. Anyway, guys, <clears throat> that is it. And you guys tell me what you think in the comments down below. Do you think this is a good decision? Do you think it's a bad decision? I mean, if you support the Second Amendment, then you're probably going to think this is a good decision. Also, again, forgive me, I am sick. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below with your thoughts and opinions. And uh, let me know uh, how you guys think I am doing uh, for my channel. And uh, should be a tack pack video coming up in the next four or five days, whenever they actually send it to me. So uh, keep an eye out for that one, too. Also, I am still filming Losing Immersion. Uh, I may have another one of those videos out uh, soon as well. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you all, and I will see you guys next time, hopefully when I'm better. If you guys like that video, and you like freedom as much as I do, go ahead, like and subscribe, drop a comment down below, and go ahead and head over to rumble.com and subscribe to me there. That would greatly, greatly help me out, especially if, you know, YouTube gets taken down for whatever reason. I wonder what that reason could be. <clears throat> they don't like guns. But that way, you, the viewer, will still be able to watch me and all of my patriotic glory uh, should anything happen to my YouTube channel because Rumble values free speech. Anyway, guys, as always... Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.